Hey folks, Jonathan here. Okay, so I'm uploading a video now, and it's of the paint engine running. Uh, probably put it on in the morning. And trying to clean up my mess some that I had out here that I made from uh, setting them other engines up. And because I want to keep it clean around the Bates engine, I got to move some stuff around. I think I'm going to turn this engine maybe... I don't know. We're going to do something, but I got, like I said, I got to run some piping over to it. So I want to be able to run it too. Uh, I want to be able to run just, just about all of them. Uh, let me see. Oh, okay. Stack. Put that stack on today. Picked it up. Uh, just put four foot up above it and put a cap on it because I don't want it to rain down it, of course. And, uh, oh, added the cupola. I bought that cupola off of a guy and, uh, he was trying to sell some stuff and get some money together because he he had uh, gotten cancer and uh, my son bought a tractor from him and the tractor was stuck and he got the engine unstuck and uh, got it running old case VAC and uh, decided that we would uh, videotape using it look at that I think I've seen a lizard anyway I we would videotape using it I did see a lizard but he disappeared so anyway the guy that I bought the cupola from uh, we happened to be over there picking up a tractor that my son bought and we got it uh, we got it was stuck and he got my son got it unstuck and got it running and I helped him out with the valves on it and and uh, it ran great we had it belted up to the uh, edger back here and uh, my son did some video on it, and he said, "Well, I'm going." Daddy said, "I'm going to send the video to the guy that we got it from because the guy, you know, he was pretty excited about Jordan getting it and getting it running off." And we went to uh, look up his information, and he had already passed away. So, but I was glad to get that cupola. Uh, it's real copper on top, and you know, got a nice weather vane. So, anyway, I remember him every time I walked by it. Uh, good fella. I actually bought the little Ford tractor from him also. So, I don't know, up north I know you don't have a lot of lizards, but uh, I remember when I was a kid we had some salamanders and uh, in the water and stuff like that, but around here, I'm looking on the wrong one, ain't I? Aha! Got it zoomed in so far. Around here we got a lot of lizards and they change colors. No, they're not called chameleons, but they actually change and get they'll turn green But uh, they're all over the place But they're neat. They'll bite you, but I mean when they bite you they just It just uh, they clamp on and don't hurt it just Might scare a few people, but anyway all right, so Bought a pan today to put under that engine and of course it turned out to be too small so I'm I need to mount that engine down, so I want to mount it on a pan, and I really want to do this one too. See the oil drips right there? That's what I'm trying to keep from having, because we're going to have oil drips, because we got to keep them oiled. And uh, if you got a pan down there, at least it'll leak into the pan, and you can wipe it out or whatever you need to do. But uh, I need a cake pan, but I don't need one so big as that, because that's a drip pan. But I need one big enough to go under the base. So we're going to keep looking. I uh, might have to get online and order something. So anyway, everything's good with the boiler. I didn't drain it. I'm not going to take the water out because uh, we'll probably be firing this thing up. Uh, probably the weekend. And I want to get one more engine up and running. Uh, I'd love to run Gene's old engine on it. Uh, that engine ran so good on air that I have no doubt that it would. This little boiler would run it fine, and you know, at a, at a slow RPM. Uh, that engine runs excellent. I mean, really good. On, I mean, you know, the, I, I was surprised. But anyway, so today I think what I'm going to do now, something that I really don't need to do, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, I think we're going to start tearing this down. Uh, my wife and I talked about it, and I think uh, we're going to clean this thing up and go ahead and see if we can get it running. Uh, 
a lot of people don't realize that my wife does a lot of the stuff here. She does a lot of the, the painting of the boilers and stuff like that, and she's a lot of help around here. You know, operates the forklift when I need her, and you know, putting stuff in and out and around. Matter of fact, she helped me set this in because it's 5,000 pounds and it's kind of hard to maneuver it when you're by yourself. So, um, so she's a lot of help around here, but she just don't want to be on camera and don't like to be on camera. But anyway, so I have already pulled this off and realized that someone packed it full of grease. I pulled the head off, realized somebody packed it full of grease. We need to replace this tin and we'll probably replace it with copper and we'll put our tag back on it this is the company where it was bought uh, 10 horsepower i think it's like 56 inches tall maybe something like that it's tall it's a big engine so i figured we could pipe it to that boiler too after this one this engine and just bring it back here and pipe it in and then if we got something we want to run we can sit it back here and, and run it off of it since we've got room i'm just trying to get everything in in the dry and uh so let me get some tools here and we'll go to pulling some parts off and we'll take a look at them. I'll show you what it looks like. All right. All right. There we go. Believe it or not, that is old grease. And if you smell it, you can sure tell it. It almost reminds me of the drip gas that I remember smelling as a kid up in West Virginia. Uh, but all this was packed in there. And that's what saved this thing. Someone had packed all that stuff in here. And I'm sure when they done it, it was a regular grease and it just turned into, you know, rock hard what it is now. So this shaft here is gonna have to be remade. It's so rusty and stuff down here. We'll get it off and apart. So uh, this actually mounts to it. And this is where you adjust your timing. And we'll have to take this off probably and clean it up the valve is not stuck in here i actually moved it the last time i had it off so it will move but like i said the rods what we're going to redo this rod for the eccentric is fine we'll get that off and we'll get the the rod taken off for the piston and then we'll actually get this bottom end turning over and uh pull these bearing caps off and clean everything i think the babbit's fine in it we'll just have to regap them and everything but so let's pull the head off and see what it looks like um, I think that'll be that'll be fine there we can clean this up and uh, should be no problem all right all right folks there's the inside of the head and let's see if I can get up in there I guess we put it in a dark spot let me get my light out and we can see up in it oh yeah you can smell it but the cylinder walls are nice Yeah, no problem there. It's all grease. Definitely no issues with that cylinder. I don't even see any rust on it at all. It's nice. Yeah. So, cylinder wise, it's perfect. Everything looks bad. It's amazing. Alright, folks, we took a few parts off, took the eccentric rod off. I uh, actually loosened this up and slid it up and we did move it a little bit in here so it's not completely stuck. Uh, we did go ahead and I took the wire brush on the side grinder and cleaned up in here. As you can see I got it oiled and uh, both sides and I cleaned as good as I could on the rod. I believe we're going to remake the rod but we do have this thing rolling over pretty easy and uh, as you can see the grease on top so cylinder is no problem you know right now our problem is, is our cylinder rod and our valve rod so because it's going to be hard to ever get them to seal with them pitted and, and messed up like they are but, uh, as you can see turns with no problem uh, now I did loosen the mains up too and we are going to pull these caps off and try to clean everything up, clean all the holes out for the oil holes. Uh, we are not going to pull the crank out. And the reason I say that, this pulley or that pulley would have to come off. And the chances of breaking them pulleys are uh, probably 
in my book and uh, I would rather not break one uh, that's the flywheel and of course this is the belt pulley so we'll just pull the caps clean everything up where it's at and if we decide to paint it then we'll do what we got to do to paint it to make it look good I uh, need to pick it up and get it off this dirt but we'll get it set on something I wish I'd have uh, thought about this I could have pulled a, pulled a concrete pad for this also I mean we can still do it but I just wish I would have done it when I done the one for this engine uh, just never thought about it but anyway that's the way it goes now we're still going to pull this cover off it's just sheet metal where it's got all the holes in it we'll replace it we may go back with brass or we may go back with steel it don't matter I've got steel I'd have to buy brass so that might tell you what I'm going to do so this engine I'm going to call 602 I guess that was my better number when I bought this engine I bought this in Savannah Georgia on an online auction been sitting out in the weather years and years I got it along with that uh, Continental Gen Company engine which had been in a fire and burnt the Babbitt out I'm assuming now the Babbitt looks really good in this we're going to take it off and check it here shortly uh, we'll probably do that next now as for the uh, eccentric piece here's it and here's the cap and as you can see in really really good shape which you know it hadn't been turned in years I like the way they got the zeros there and the zeros there so you get the cap on right oh, that's neat but uh, eccentric was really really dry and stuck now this engine is I mean I can't say how many years it's been since it's been you know even rolled over I do know that up here it's pitted and down there where it's sitting at it's not so I mean it's been a long time but uh you know they some of them are worth saving this one's definitely worth saving I don't think we'll have to do any babbit work uh we'll go ahead and make new rods for it and see that rod's terrible there but uh I can actually use a bolt for this and then thread whatever I need to thread for it or whatever I got to do I think that'll work out fine and uh or I mean I may have the rod but I probably got I've got bolts 18 inches long so well, I got some I think 20 but uh, try to get the pin out for the current for the rod have not got it out yet I have got it to move a long ways uh, well a little ways uh, not even not quite a quarter inch but I uh, did loosen these up and moved moved them as far as I could there's just no wear in there uh, there's not a lot of wear in there to be able to move them because you move them down to tighten them and up to loosen them up and they're already all the way up and they're still pretty tight in there so there's no wear on that part so I'd say the engine's probably in pretty good shape uh, I think a seven and a half inch bore good tape measure seven inch bore yeah because it drops down a little bit so it's seven inch bore which is a good size engine uh, to get the stroke you can let me see let me turn it just a little bit and we'll check the stroke on okay I just turned it on top and bottom dead center and measured the travel on that so it's eight inch so this is a seven by eight so it's a pretty good size uh, it's not a tiny engine anyway so like I said rated at 10 horsepower probably I don't know three or four hundred foot pounds of torque uh, more than your average car for sure but anyway uh, let me go in and cool off I'm soaking wet air is heavy hard to breathe but uh, it is what it is so uh, go get cooled off change my shirt and church soap so uh, humidity is so bad out here just you know you walk out and you just start pouring sweat so uh, we'll come back out and I'm going to try to get this rod out try to get the piston rod out because I mean it's just it's pitted so bad that it'll never hold a seal so I don't you know I, I just put the video on the last one that you watched I haven't put it on yet but it will be have been the last one you watched by the time I put this one on uh, of the pain engine leaking pretty bad around that seal and I don't like that just I think it just needs to repack but uh, I don't I don't just don't like a lot of you know steam coming out of there you can definitely see your leaks when you got steam so anyway I think this will be a good engine real good engine so we'll get to playing with it a little more here shortly and I'll show you all right all right folks I went and ate too much and uh, my wife is a excellent cook so 
Uh, I'm surprised I don't weigh 500 pounds, but got cooled off. I'm back out here. Not sure how much we can do, but what we need to figure out now is how we're going to get this piston out of here. Now, I have already loosened this nut up. So what I'm going to do is roll it up on top dead center and see if there's holes in the piston to turn it or what. We're going to have to get that grease off the top of it because I can't really see it good. But let's get it up there and see what it looks like. All right, so we're up on top dead center. Whew, that's nasty. Nasty, nasty, but I can't say nothing because that's what saved it. All right, let me get something to get that cleaned out. Well, here's what we got out of it. That's nasty. Look, we might have a nut there. Look like a nut. Let me go get some big sockets. Now, see, we got the two holes here. But yeah, that's a nut. All right, let's see if that turns the whole piston and rod or if it just takes it off there I and mean, then we can back it down and pull the piston out by itself either way we're going to pull it all right all right so it was inch and 13 16 and it is turning of course i already had that jam not loose so we're going to go ahead and turn this thing completely out and get that piston out of it and look at the rings okay i figured i'd just show you what i seen just as soon as it come up uh we got a ring busted and Get some light on the subject here. Yeah, it's not a fresh break. It's been broke. So we just got to figure out where the other piece is at or if it's even in there. So uh, getting rings is not really a problem. I mean, uh, there's a lot of companies making them and a lot of hit and miss engine runs big one like this. So we'll measure it out and see if we can get one on the way and uh, or get a set on the way and go from there. All right. Okay, folks, my guess is going to be that that broken ring, uh, somebody took it apart and it came out and they left it out because there's no way for it to get out of here and uh, the pieces are not there. It's not, you know, anything gouged up or anything like that. So someone has taken it apart and took it out. Now, the ring in gap to me is, uh, it's fair. I mean, for being this big of a cylinder, but this is what's going to surprise you. Let me pull this thing out and I want to show you something. So, both rings are off the piston. And I've got them laying here. And if you look, it's getting kind of dark out here. So that's about the thickness of a, I uh, will say a, a penny, or maybe down to a dime. And that is the thickness of uh, two quarters stacked on top of each other. So, you know, your, your pressure is right here, I guess, sticking out and and uh, that ring has just worn that much. And this one's pretty much the same thing. So, you know, I've, I've never seen rings that wasn't equal all the way around when they were factory new. So I would say that they're just wore out. I mean, it's just all there is to it now. Uh, I didn't, I actually moved that ring down to the center and down to the bottom and that ringing gap was the same. I don't think there's any cylinder issues. We're just gonna have to put a set of rings on it, uh, both rings. Uh, I even considered even thought about well I don't think I'll do it but I thought about even just welding that up and chucking the piston up I could run a center there and I could turn that down but then again I kind of like using a chrome cylinder or a chrome shaft off of a hydraulic cylinder and that way we uh, we never have to worry about it tearing the seal out or rusting or anything like that looks like we've got an inch and a quarter shaft so threading that won't be bad. And then of course there's just a nut on the other side. That's countersunk in. So we can deal with that. So we know what we gotta do here. Two rings, the rod, and then we need to get this out. We'll do that tomorrow. It's getting pretty dark. And uh, we'll at least get it all apart and get some parts on the way. And start getting everything cleaned up. And getting these bearing caps off. Checking these uh, Babbitts, which I, I'm pretty sure is no problem with. I might pull one of them off real quick and just take a look at it. Uh, we ain't got much time, but we got a little bit of time. All right. Okay. Don't look too bad at all, actually. Babbitts in really good shape. Uh, got a little rust in there. It's going to have to be cleaned out really well. and We'll reshim the Babbitts. Uh, probably pick the crank up and clean it. I can't take it out because it won't fit through the hole but on either side, but that's okay. Uh... We'll clean these up some more, but I think they'll be okay. 
Uh, the slides are nice and tight. I mean, they're not they're not worn out or anything like that. Uh, from the looks of this, evidently they probably was oiling it good from the outside, and maybe their hydrostatic lubricator or oil or whatever they had on it wasn't putting steam oil in it good, and that's why the rings might be worn like they are. But you know, they'll work just fine. These are pretty forgiving old engines. I mean, not much to them. Uh, I'll get uh, get to cleaning. My wife, of course, she'll help me out. I know, and we'll get this thing cleaned up and. Uh, looking decent before we try to put a little bit of paint on it. Uh, I'm liking it though. I think it's going to be alright. I think it's going to be just fine. Uh, we just got a, a lot of little stuff to get taken care of, but we'll get her. Alright. Appreciate everybody watching, and uh, I'll try to post some more on this or whatever I'm doing tomorrow. Might be something different, might be this, but uh, Either way, we'll be back on it. All right. Bye.